Later, too, I have come to accept claims which then, in 1923, I never troubled to examine and to accept the supernatural as the real. But I was aware of no such needs that summer. Some days life kept pace with the gondola as we nosed through the side canals and the boatman uttered his plaintive musical bird cry of warning. On other days, with the speedboat, bouncing over the lagoon in a stream of sunlit foam. Every morning after breakfast, Sebastian, Cara and I would leave the palace by the street door and wander through a maze of bridges and squares and alleys to Florian's for coffee and watch the grave crowds crossing and recrossing under the Campanile. I was drowning in honey, stingless. The fortnight in Venice passed quickly and sweetly, perhaps too sweetly. It left a confused memory of fierce sunlight on the sands, of cool marble interiors, of water everywhere lapping on smooth stone, reflected in a dapple of light on painted ceilings, of a night at the Corombona Palace such as Byron might have known. I remember most particularly one conversation towards the end of my visit. Sebastian had gone to play tennis with his father and Cara at last admitted to fatigue. We sat in the late afternoon at the windows overlooking the Grand Canal. It was the first time we had been alone together.